You are listening to the Examine Life with Bram Levinson. Okay, so I need to just let you in on the insanity of this moment. We are still in Greece. We're still here. Uh, we leave in a couple of days, and as I mentioned in the last podcast, the weather has been extremely, extremely windy, to the point where yesterday there were no ferries running between Athens and the islands, and vice versa. So the wind has been very intense, and I mean, I listen, I love it. I, I feel like I'm just in, in, engulfed by the elements here, and I see the mythology of the wind gods and and the sun god and I'm just I, I'm very connected to the elements here in a way that I'm not connected at home actually I was discussing this with someone over the last couple of days and it is very true that at home I live right next to Mount Royal and yet I don't really feel connected to the elements there at all in the same way that I do here in Greece it's a very different primal uh very bare and raw exposure to the elements here that really, really resonates with me. And so this wind hasn't been bothering me at all, except for wanting to sit down and record a podcast. I can't really do it in my room anymore because the sound of the wind may be lovely to hear in the background, but it is now rattling doors and rattling windows and shaking the building. And so... The insanity has finally led me to my car rental, my rental car. (laughs) I am sitting in my rental car in the parking area of the hotel. I've got the microphone. I've got my laptop. I am sitting here. This is commitment. And this just attests to how much I love doing this, how much I want to do this. This podcasting medium feels so good for me. It feels so natural. It's such a natural way to express myself and it just it just it's like slipping into a warm bath it's like putting on you know the most perfect fitting glove it just feels fantastic and uh you know I needed to share with you I wasn't going to pretend this wasn't happening I mean I am in my rental car the wind is whipping around me and this is where I get the best acoustics and the best sound for you all the sacrifices I make for you all anyway what I was doing this for, what I wanted to uh, talk about or read to you is something that I wrote, I don't know how long ago, years ago, years and years ago. Um, in Sanskrit, the word sutra or sutra means thread. And in the yoga teachings, we are exposed to the teachings of Patanjali, who is the man who wrote down the teachings of yoga for the first time. Before him, they were taught orally from uh, teacher to disciple. And Patanjali wrote them down so that we could have them and study them and, you know, apply them to our own lives. Years ago, I decided that I was going, you know, there's so many versions of so many books that I had started that I never wrote. And at one point I thought I was going to write a book that was in the style of the sutras, the Patanjali's Yoga Sutras, and there are other sutras, there are the Shiva Sutras and, and so on and so forth. And I thought that very flippantly I would write something called the Brahma Sutras. And obviously my name is Bram. Brahma is the name of the god of creation in Hinduism. And I wasn't going to spell it as Brahma. I was going to spell it as my name, Brahma, the Brahma Sutras, thinking that would be cute, a little bit arrogant, which is why I never did it. Uh, But I wrote 50 sutras, 50 points that I thought were worth getting down in the order that I thought they were worth, you know, getting them down in. And what I wanted to do now is read to you the Brahma Sutras because I think they're pretty accurate. And listen, take the whole title with a grain of salt. I obviously didn't go on to publish this book because I just thought, how arrogant would that be? But yet, um, I think it's kind of funny. The Brahma Sutras, here you go. The first sutra, number one. These words are your call to presence, to attention, to this moment. Number two, transformation is the only constant. Everything will change 
from the greatest blessings bestowed upon us to the darkest moments we will survive. If it arises within your awareness, it is already in a state of transformation. Number three. Actually, number three A. This moment is more important than the ones that preceded it, and the ones that will follow it in this moment are more important. This is true for each moment, as with each passing second a new moment is. 3b. The present moment is your priority. What came before and what comes after must be secondary to the present moment in all moments. 4. Concentration on the present moment is a mindfulness practice. Mindfulness is the practice of working with our thoughts. It is the ability to hone one's attention in one specific direction onto one thing specifically for longer and longer periods of time. It is also the ability to be present enough to notice when the thoughts are focused on something and then redirecting the thoughts to something else. 5. Mindfulness is the art of awakening. Accessing this art requires paying attention. By paying attention, we begin to tune into a different frequency, and the more often we get into the habit of tuning into that different frequency, the more we work at changing our experience of life. 6. This experience of life will be wholly and entirely dependent on your perspective and your ability to reframe a situation so that perspective is changeable and fluid. 6. This experience of life will be wholly and entirely dependent on our perspective and our ability to reframe a situation so that perspective is changeable and fluid. 7. Our unique understanding of reality is almost entirely based on our perspective, which informs the understanding we have of our environment and scenarios of everything that arises within our awareness. 8a. Conflict may arise when one person disregards another's understanding of reality in favor of his or her own, and then attempts to impose it. 8b. Harmony may arise when one person acknowledges and validates another's understanding of reality while allowing it to coexist with his or her own, with no need to suppress the others in order to validate his or her own. 9a. Self-conflict may arise when one person adheres to his or her understanding of reality instead of welcoming alternate perspectives. 9b. Self-harmony may arise when one person welcomes alternate perspectives that reveal the relativity of reality. 10a. The experience of life will be greatly influenced by the honesty and transparency with which we assess whether we naturally gravitate to conflict or harmony. 10b. We have a choice as to whether our time is spent in conflict or in harmony. 11. The human brain, untethered and undisciplined, leans towards the negative aspects of our understanding of events. 12. We ruminate over the fear we have of the negative outweighing the positive in our understanding of events, which takes us out of the present moment and propels us into the abstract, into what is not. 13. Mindfulness is the discipline that allows us to focus on the opposite of the negative, the opposite of what scares us, the opposite of conflict. 14. Mindfulness practices are most useful in moments of turmoil, of chaos, of emotional triggering. 15a. One key mindfulness practice is setting an intention to prioritize harmony over conflict, negative over positive. This is attention to intention. 15b. Intention must be prioritized over reaction in moments of turmoil, of chaos, of emotional triggering. 15c. 
Intention is a commitment. 15D. Intention sets the direction that we commit to move in, the path we commit to follow, the behaviors we agree to override that only serve to contribute to our suffering. 15E. Time spent without intention is time spent at the mercy of the meanderings of the mind. 15F. Time spent with intention is time spent closer to the energies of that which we wish to be in alignment with throughout this lifetime. 16. Setting an intention effectively and efficiently requires acceptance of what is. 17. Acceptance is the precursor for change. 18. One cannot efficiently move in the most meaningful direction without acceptance of what is and of what life has brought to our table. 19. Acceptance involves grieving for what was once hoped for, but what was never meant to be. 20. The mind that practices meaningfulness is the mind that seeks to see beyond the literal, beyond the obvious, beyond the appearance of any given moment, person, or object. 21. The practice of meaningfulness contributes to our ability to reframe our situation so that our perspective of it rather is altered. It aids in seeing past the seemingly random so that we find connections where, on a superficial level, none would appear to exist. 22. To find connections where previously none were apparent is to find meaning in the innocuous, to find a deeper understanding that possibly informs events and our relationship to them. 23. The practice of meaningfulness is the practice of finding meaning that serves us to align with the intentions we set for the time and events which await us. 24. Initial stages of practicing meaningfulness include asking certain questions in pursuit of a deeper meaning. Questions like, what am I meant to learn from this? What else is occurring right now in this moment that I may be distracted from due to my, due to my mind's negative bias? And how can my experience of this challenge or moment serve to connect me to others instead of leaving me feeling isolated and alone? Our perspective is everything. The way we see the world is the way we experience it. It really is that simple. 25. Reframing a situation aids in shifting perspective. 26. Shifting perspective helps us move from the limits of our own personal history and experiences. 27. Shifting perspective helps us move away from the default egocentricity we feed when we stay stuck in our own self-interests and self-awareness. 28. Shifting perspective helps us move from the I and the me to the us and the we. 29. Shifting perspective helps us find the freedom to choose a different interpretation and understanding. 30. Shifting perspective may lead us to growth and transformation. 31. Shifting perspective may facilitate turning the negative into positive. 32. Shifting perspective contributes to practicing meaningfulness. 33. We must never forget the kindness bestowed upon us by another. 34. We must immediately forget the wrongdoing or hurt bestowed upon us by another. 35. The practice of gratitude is the practice of considering the blessings we are surrounded by. 36. The practice of gratitude is the practice of considering how fragile and temporal our blessings may be. 37. The practice of gratitude is the practice of considering how, in this moment, 
suffering could be considerably heightened, and appreciating that it is not. 38. The loss of gratitude is a key factor in the destruction of the affiliations and partnerships we have. 39. The practice of compassion involves the consideration that all beings operate in the midst of hardship. 40. The practice of compassion involves prayer and action for the end of all suffering, for ourselves and for others. 41. The practice of fearing less involves repointing the mind from the potential of the negative to manifest to the potential of the positive to manifest. 42. Communication is the foundation for the healthiest and most positive of affiliations and relationships. 43. Your story is worth telling. 44. Your story is worth observing. 45. Observing the narrative of your life without personalization will bring clarity. 46. Observing the emotions, sensations, and thoughts elicited from observing your narrative will bring clarity. 47. Observing the emotions, sensations, and thoughts that arise within you in any and all circumstances, contexts, and environments will bring clarity. 48. You are the power of observation. 49. You are not what you observe. 50. There is just this, and it is perfect as it is. So I'm assuming that there was a lot in there to unpack, and I would suggest that you listen to this episode over and over and over again at different times and different uh, moments of your life, moments of your day, moments of your week. Certain ones will pop up and seem to be relevant to you in different moments. And if you listen to the episode over again at a different juncture in your life, at a different moment, uh, other ones will seem relevant. But there is some truth in here, some serious, hard-earned truth. And so, you know, give it a listen. See if any of it applies. Feel free to reach out and let me know which ones seem really, really resonating with you. Uh, And if there are some that just don't make sense at all. But, you know, give it a listen and give it a think. And I'll see you later. This has been the Examine Life with Bram Levinson.